music traditionally was something that was healing. We were originally doctors in some, some form where we were part of the healing process. It's unfortunate that music has changed to the point where, you know, some, some people might not agree. But if you think of music as a healing tool, then when you compose something, you compose something with that in mind. Like, hopefully, when I compose this song, some guy could receive some type of healing from it. I was born on the island of Dominica, and I was raised in the Virgin Islands. And growing up, I heard a variety of different styles of music. Um, everything from quill bait to calypso, salsa music, reggae music, jazz, and European classical music as well. When I play jazz, I make sure that there's cultural heritage in there, in the music. But I don't just focus on that because I don't look at it as a fad. I try to make sure that the music dictates. But, on, you know, fortunately is that I'm hearing that because I hear, you know, when I compose a song and I'm thinking about an idea, somewhere, some part of the song, there's going to be something that's from the Caribbean. <laughs> So the music we performed the Beaming Canvas, we're getting ready to record on, I think, February 28th. Um, the album we call Spiritual Awakening. Over the years, I've been extremely focused on making sure the music that I record has a deeper meaning beyond just, oh, this sounds great. Um, so there's always some kind of social justice initiative connected to the music. And this one is focusing on, if you awaken your spirit, there's nothing that you're unable to do, uh, physically or spiritually. Um, in your community. So I want to encourage folks to kind of touch or tap into that energy that our ancestors used to accomplish great things. And that's kind of the message behind the album.
over the years, my focus has always been performing with musicians that I connect with, not just musicians that I want to say to use them as a resume. You know, so with the band, I have a connection with each musician in the band. You know, beyond the bandstand, I, I really dig them as human beings. And the funny thing is, Victor and I didn't know each other in the Virgin Islands. So I sent Victor a message and said, hey man, meet me on U Street, and I'm gonna take you to all the spots. So that night we hanged out until probably like three, four o'clock in the morning. I took him to all the venues, introduced him to all the musicians, and, um, and that began our relationship. Herman and I was kind of met by chance. James King and I, James King is a bass player, great bass player. One evening, I had a gig at Bassa Bistro, and James was in a gig, and James thought the gig was at 11 o'clock in the morning, and the gig was actually at 11 p.m. Herman had just moved to the area, so what James did was said, hey man, I'm gonna send this cat on the gig. I'm sorry I messed up. I thought it was 11 o'clock in the morning. So Herman shows up, I'm like, who's this cat? He just moved to the area. And we started playing and we clicked right away. So for 11 years, Herman and I have been in the trenches. I mean, and I were born on this exact same day. We're the, we're the same age. And we're both were born on different islands. Like he was he was born on another island. I was born in Dominica. We were both raised in the Virgin Islands, you know. So it's just interesting that you meet somebody that you're friends with, you have the same musical interest, and you know, born on the same the same age. And then over the years, I mean and I got really close. I mean, we're like, hey man, check out this jazz album, or check out this reggae album, or check out this other album. And he really exposed me to a lot of different styles of music. And I'm Reginald Sinchi on the trombone.
I grew up in the Caribbean, and one of the things that would happen at church is that they will take a hymn, right? And they'll turn the hymn into a Calypso tune. And there's certain, like, key phrases you hear. So, like, in Calypso, you might hear a line, like, a rhythmic statement. You know, you all hear this, this repeated thing. So, a lot of times, you hear, like, um, the horns playing, like, real staccato lines and then playing rhythmic stuff as well. So I was thinking about how, you know, clips of songs feel and the bass line and the melody and that kind of led to the composition Rejoice. you just not only rejoicing spiritually because you went through this whole process of meditating, praying, your ritual. You went through all the spiritual work, all this work that helps you become really aware of your surroundings and your environment. And you have to celebrate that at some point. So that's Rejoice. Thank you. 
when I first came to DC in 1997, there was a concept of where you, you needed to leave and go to New York. It's what's called a brain drain, where you have great musicians all over the country and they all flock to New York City because that's the epicenter for the music. Unfortunately, when all your talent flocks to one city, what happens to that city? It creates a brain drain. There's no one to share the information. There's no one to give it back. I mean, we have YouTube and all of that, but it's not the same. If you have like great musicians in any scene and any part of the world, it's going to be better for the audience, it's going to be better for the, 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 the musicians, it's going to just be better for the music in general. So instead of folks flocking to New York City, I mean, yes, if you want to go to New York City and play with some of the Ellers, great. But realize that there's a great scene in your town. <laughs> Brian's from D.C. Brian finds a way where he studies the elders, but he still f finds a unique approach to the music. And I really love that about his Brian. Good, man. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I wasn't familiar with Mark at all. And so Herman said, hey, man, here's this cat. His name is Mark Meadows. He's a good player, piano player. I said, okay. So we started playing. And I was like, immediately fell in love with his playing because I never heard him before. And he has this like uh, bebop approach to playing the piano. So um, I really like his energy. And plus, Mark is an extremely talented individual. He's a vocalist as well and a great composer. I think Washington, D.C. is doing all right.
Thank you, Awakening. We listened to a lot of Bob Marley, a lot of Peter Tosh growing up. So I was thinking about what captures me first when I listen to like a reggae tune that deals with some deep spirituality. And it's usually a bass line. So this bass line came into mind, you know. So it was like boom, 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 do, do, boom, 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 boom. And that's what I heard, like just this, this rocking bass line, you know, in a certain groove. And then I heard this melody. I was trying to capture that feeling in a song of, when you meditate for a long period of time and you start seeing things differently, you start seeing different colors, you start seeing things around you that you didn't really notice before. So in the song Spiritual, I was trying to capture that in the melody where you have this melody moving and then the chord changes a little bit and it, there's different moments in the song where you can feel like somebody is having this experience. It might be a journey and if you don't know the title of the song, you feel something is happening that's different and that, that captures your attention. So that's like the, the, the message or the idea behind a spiritual.
would like to thank you all for coming out this evening. Again, Mr. Herman Bernie and Bass. It's always good to play with family. It's always good to play with family. Miss Ammon Gums and the drums. Yeah, it's been many years playing with Ammon since the seventh grade. Playing in BCB band class. <laughs> Victor Provost on the steel pan, all the way from St. John. Rasta man from St. John. Mr. Mark Meadows on the piano. All the way from Washington, D.C., Brian Settles. And I'm Reginald Cinti on trombone. The last tune we played was titled Spiritual. And we're working on a new album we plan to record in February called Spiritual Awakening. In these troubled times, it's very important for us to look and see what our ancestors did to survive. And one of the things that they did was use their spirituality to help guide them for social justice. So I wanted to focus on that for this next album. It'll be titled Spiritual Awakening. Now we like to seek atonement, atonement.
Thank you, thank you very much for coming out tonight. That concludes our performance. Thank you, NPR, for recording us. Thank you all for supporting us, supporting this new music. Hope to see you soon. Mr. Victor Provost and Steel Pan. Mark Meadows and Piano. Herman Bernie and Bass. I'm in Gums and Drums. Brian Settles on the tenor saxophone. And I'm Reginald Cinchia and Trombone. Thank you very much. Have a safe drive home. Good night. <laughs>